So what you should have seen for your stack diagram is something like this. First, of course, there's the return address on the stack from whoever called main. Then there's going to be the hex 28 worth of allocation for main. And I'm going to start adding some color coding here, which will you know, give you a hint at you know, what's going on. Hex 28 worth of stuff from main. Main calls func. That's going to push a return address for getting back from func to main. Then func does the same thing. Hex 28 worth of space and a return address. When it calls func2, then we have our hex 38 worth of space. And specifically, we're going to see the tail, hex tail, is placed at this location, FD90. So that's the overall situation. And then when func calls func, sorry, func2 calls func3, then it'll put a return address onto the stack. And func3 will only allocate hex 18. So I've added my little color coding here to give you the hint of what's going to be going on. But even without the color coding, you might have sort of started to see a pattern of, okay, well, the hex 18 is here, and I can see that hex 18 out of that hex 38 is right here, and that leaves hex 20. And so if this hex 20 is, you know, related to calling a function, maybe these hex 28s are actually hex 20 plus 8, hex 20 plus 8. And, you know, maybe this is hex 10 plus 8 and hex 20, hex 10 plus 8. And so that's kind of what's going on here. So now this is the most important bit about justifying, you know, what's going on. This is from Microsoft's documentation about stack usage. And specifically, they say the stack will always be maintained 16 byte aligned, except within the prologue, for example, after a return address is pushed. So there's some, you know, exceptions to that rule. But in general, what we should think of is that the Microsoft compiler is trying to maintain a 16 byte alignment when it's allocating space on the stack. So therefore, what I'm going to make is an assertion. I'm going to assert that these initial yellow undefs are actually 16 byte stack alignment padding. And if that's true, then okay, great. We've got these, you know, weird hex 20s going on here, but you know, we start to see some, you know, more pattern. Furthermore, I'm going to make a further alignment assertion that the green undefined area is actually 16 byte alignment padding because Visual Studio is trying to keep these local variable space hex 16 byte aligned. So the first thing would be 16 byte alignment in order to pad out the return address. So if they're trying to stay 16 byte aligned, so an address that ends in zero here, if they're trying to stay 16 byte aligned and then they call a function, that's going to naturally unalign it because the return address is going to get put on the stack. And so then the compiler is going to compensate for that by adding at least hex 8 of uh, padding in order to get back to a 16 byte align thing. But then when it goes on to allocate uh, space for local variables, going to claim again, it shall allocate in not less than hex 16, uh, 16 bytes at a time, hex 10 at a time. And that's what's going to lead to this over allocation for a single local variable. But you might be saying to yourself, you know, that doesn't really add up because if that's all they were trying to do, then, you know, why would they have this 16 and this six, sorry, this eight and this eight, they could have left both of those out and they would have still yielded a 16 byte aligned address. This tail could have been placed right here and then everything would have still worked out. All right. Well, so, you know, why would I say something so controversial yet so brave? The answer is because the data backs me up. We can start doing simple empirical tests to try to see whether or not that holds true. So I'm going to have some new simple code and I'm going to have two local variables, i and j. This one is a foldable football and this one is obstacles. So paper football. So you can now go ahead and build a stack diagram for this code, and you should see some proof of what I was saying. If I say that the allocations for local variables are in hex 16, sorry, 16, hex 10 byte chunks at a time, and Microsoft wants to do not less than that, then that would imply that when we have at least 16 bytes worth of data, then it should perfectly fill this up without adding extra undefined padding on either side of it. So let's see if that's true. Go ahead and stop and go through the double local variable example and draw a stock diagram and see how it all plays out.